Hey gang, Scott here. About a week ago or so, I shared a video about the vignette filter in On One Effects, how to use it, you know, how I use it, and you know, shaping your vignette and recentering it and all that. And there were a bunch of comments, and there were a couple of really good tips from other viewers. I wanted to share those because they are really cool tips. And so that's what we'll do in this video. And real quick, if you are thinking about adding On One Effects, Photo Raw, any of the On One products to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there will save you money, gives me a little support, so I can keep doing videos like this. So uh, let's talk vignette tips here. This first tip is courtesy of Joel. He talked about using a luminosity mask with a vignette. So we got our vignette on here, and let's get something that's really strong. And you saw in the other video, I would take you know, the feather down so I could see where the vignette is, and you know, size it, and maybe reposition it a little bit. You know, Maybe in this case, I'll bias it a little to the left. And then take care of the feather and, and adjust brightness. But notice what's happening to the shadows. The shadows are getting really crushed here. And I'm exaggerating things so we can see that this technique does really help. Let's go up into your masking area, hit the lumen button. And what that will do is by default, it will mask things away from shadow areas and leave it applied to highlight areas. And you know some adjustment on the density slider of the mask now helps. But you know, see how um, much more subtle that is on the corners, especially in the shadow areas, right? So this is before that vignette and after. Okay, great. But here before the mask, reset the mask. The shadows are just getting crushed. Undo that. After, a much more natural pleasing look. So using a luminosity mask, maybe with some adjustment on the density slider, that's a really cool tip. So Joel, thanks for putting that comment in there. The second one is about angled vignettes. That's something we can't quite do in the vignette tool. And this tip comes courtesy of Bruce. So let me turn off this vignette. Uh, actually, before I do that, let's reset, get that mask uh, closed up here. And so what we can do with the vignette tool is we can change the size, we can change the shape to a degree, but in this case, in this photo, let me turn off this vignette here. My, my real interesting area is kind of on this diagonal from you know up here, down here, right? You know, so somewhere above the sun down into this foreground here. I can't make an angled vignette shape with the vignette tool. We can do that with a local adjustment. So we'll go over into our locals and the default is darken, great. And the toolbar, we'll switch over to our masking bug and there is an actual preset, a shape vignette. I'll just click once and put it there. That's great. We can do all the normal things we do with elliptical masks. And I noticed for vignettes, I like a really big feather, but now I can rotate this and I can get this angled vignette. And so we can really see what's going on. Let me tighten that up so you can obviously see, you know, before and after. It's definitely angular. It's leaving this center part unaffected. It's adding this darkening of exposure here. And then of course I can finally dial that back. And here is another, uh, maybe a variation on Joel's tip to couple it with Bruce's angled tip. In the blending options, if I want to protect those shadows, watch the, now let's do this. Let me get that exposure really far down. Watch the shadows in the corners. I can open these up a little bit. I can open up the midtones a little bit. I have some control with my blending modes to protect the shadows and not make them too dark in the corner. So there's the angled vignette before and after. So those are two other vignette tips. Joel, Bruce, thanks very much for sharing those thoughts in the comments. Anyone else has any uh, cool tips for vignettes or other things that on one, drop them down in the comments. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.